What do we got here? We've got the best, best. Are these only two that you have? Yep. We've got four more coming out later on in the year. Yeah, that's gonna be. Ooh, that's spicy. This is my first day at the test kitchen. I'm here to share my family's favorite recipe, coconut chicken yogurt from the wonderful country of Somalia, my home country. Because we have the longest coastline in Africa, in Somalia, we use a lot of warm spices. The way the Indian Ocean and the spice trade flowed through Somalia, carrying on to Tanzania, going down to Zanzibar, and on and on to Mozambique and Madagascar. The way that cinnamon is used in Somalia is very different than the way cinnamon is used in Mozambique. One is savory, one is sweet. And uh, I think that's what's really special about the countries that border the Indian Ocean. It's a vast place that also served as a flavor gateway in the so many different places. On top of that, then you have the colonization. So Somalia was an Italian colony until 1960, which my parents grew up in um, Italy, Somalia. And and a lot of our stuff is pasta and sugo, which is, you know, pasta sauce. I like to really say that anything in this recipe can be found in your everyday pantry. So there's cumin, cardamom, turmeric, ginger, yogurt, tomato paste, pepper, more tomatoes. So I'm gonna just cut up the jalapenos take the membranes out. I do that just to adjust the heat level. If sometimes I want it a little bit hotter, I'll keep more of the insides in. Obviously, if I'm making it for a friend who doesn't like heat as much as I do, then I'll take some out. If I'm making it for a large group, I'll allow them to adjust by putting their own sauces on top of it. I like a little heat. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna add the bell peppers along to this puree before we Set it aside. This is where really the, the base of the stew comes from. Ooh, they're juicy. These are good ones. Do you guys shop at the farmer's market? This is my favorite thing in my house. All right. We're gonna just heat some olive oil before I throw the onions and garlic in. I love the way the apron says Brooklyn, like the way it's framed in uh, BCAM. It's amazing. Oh, yay. If I look cray cray, y'all will tell me. That's our, that's, that's our job. Okay. Don't let me get lost in the sauce. I'm gonna just throw in the onions and the garlic. We're gonna sweat them out, stir often. Should take about five minutes. So while I let this cook down, I'm gonna go over and get my ginger together, um, which is the next thing I'm gonna throw in here, along with the spices. I just use a spoon to take the skin off. This way I don't lose a lot of the meat. Also too, like where I come from, where I come from, I come from Brooklyn. But in Somalia, we use ginger for everything. We have it in the morning with our tea. We use it in our rice. Ginger is a big part of my everyday life. I told Tommy, I said, the only thing I didn't want to do was chop on camera. And here we are. Here we are, <laughs> chopping. I was born in Mogadishu in 1986. When the war happened in 1991, my family and I moved to Nairobi. I was like four or five years old being my mother's helper in the kitchen and like in the middle of a war and learning how to be an independent child. <laughs> and then I moved to Seattle in 1993. Can we talk about your shoes? Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do my feet look a little rough? <laughs> My polish is called a good Mandarin's hard to find because I live in New York City and I don't know where they are. Oh, you smell that? So good. I'm gonna dump my roughly chopped ginger in. Cumin, cardamom. Look how pretty this turmeric is. We're gonna fold all of this together. Let it go for about one to two minutes until it's fragrant. And then we're gonna add our puree. Woo! Smells like my mother's house. Is this a recipe from when you were a kid? Yeah, so this is a recipe that my sisters and my mother cook all the time. More my sisters than my mom. My mom is into shouting instructions while sitting on the kitchen floor. Every person in my family makes it a little bit different. My mother uses ghee, I don't use ghee. Just cause like, obviously, I live in New York City and I don't wanna add extra fat where I don't you know, need it. All right, so it's starting to brown. It's getting sticky at the bottom. This is a good time to throw in what we pureed earlier. I'm gonna mix everything together and I'm gonna let this come to a boil for about 10 minutes. So in addition to the puree, I'm gonna add my yogurt now. 
Save. Then we're going to add about a tablespoon of tomato puree. Stir it together. Look how pretty it looks. So I'm going to cover and uh, let it simmer for about 10 minutes, occasionally checking on it and stirring. Somali people are very particular in the way they pronounce things. And since I've been here by myself since I was seven, my Somali is Somali in English. <laughs> my little sister was like, what are you going to cook? And I told her, I was like, I'm going to make the kalkumbe. And she's like, why are you saying it like that? My family lives in Oslo. They live in Norway. Here's her sending me how to say digat gumbe. Digat gumbe. My little sister, we call her kadogo, which means small one in Suaheli because she's like small but mighty. She's like one of the best cooks in our family. So it's been about 10 minutes. We're gonna now add the carrots and potatoes. I'm gonna stir it all together. And I'm gonna let this cook for about 15 to 18 minutes. Oh, it smells so good. In my family, like in the mornings, if you wake up and you get to the kitchen, you can find my mom with a turmeric mask on her face almost every day. It's like a beauty thing that women in Somalia do. I'm gonna roughly chop about a cup of cilantro. Chop, chop, chop. Cilantro just makes everything better. Oh, even smelling it right now. I fit right in. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go throw this in. Oh, there it goes. Potatoes look ready. Here's the cute chicken. I'm using chicken breast, two pounds of it. In my family too, we use a lot of thigh because thigh is just juicier and the bone holds onto the juice a little bit better than a breast. Throw the cilantro in. I'll let this simmer for about 20 minutes until the chicken is tender and then we'll come back. Oh, it tastes just like my mom's. So good. How is it? Good. I Good. love that cooking. This is Beth Linsky, my <laughs> fairy godmother <laughs> and my <laughs> business mentor. Yes. <laughs> AKA my BFF. <laughs> I invited her here today so she can have some of this. They got gumbe. Get blessed by that scent. <laughs> by that aroma. Oh yeah. Look at that color. And if we had some cilantro, I'd just throw some cilantro over it. And traditionally I would eat this with <laughs> Miracles, they happen it's every day. Cool. Sometimes you say something and it'll just show up. This is traditionally eaten with a banana. It's how I like to eat it, how most Somalis eat it. Get out! <laughs> this kitchen is magic. All right. Mmm. And if you have hot sauce and you want to throw that on top of there, you can. We use what's called best best, which means chili in Somali. We have a coconut and cilantro one and a tamarind and date one. I own a business that makes these hot sauces. Uh, so I often throw just a couple of spoons of it on top of here. Do you have them here? Um, I, I did not bring them because I didn't think about the crew today, but I'll, I'll bring some next time. I think about the crew. Matt has some. Yes! Oh my goodness! Do you Would you eat that? your sauces with this? Oh yeah, so you just put the green sauce on top. Really best. The best best right. on top. Thank you, Tommy. We got the best yep. best. We've got the best best. It's got a bit of a kick. It's made with a jalapeno, so it really brings all the flavors together. Mmm. I love yeah. that best best is getting a shot out. Oh yeah, that's the brand, man. So what happens with the spinach? I, I eat it with spinach sometimes, especially late at night. I'll make oh. a pot for myself and then eat it throughout the week. So okay. I'll use my spinach as the base instead of rice when I'm going easy on carbs. Oh. Yeah, let me make you a plate. And what's with the banana? Mmm. Mmm. so good. This is amazing. I've never done this before. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> it's crazy because it's like not only savory and sweet, but it's hot and cold. So it's, there's like all sorts of contrast happening in your mouth at the same time. Just gonna get What's it right this off the... What's dish called? It's called... <laughs> Diga kumbe. Diga kumbe. Yes! Did I just nail that? You... I mean, <laughs> we've been trying in here for a while. <laughs> Diga kumbe. You guys can stop rolling because now I'm just gonna eat my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want me to leave? Mm. Mm. Well, there you have it. Somali food on Bone App. I hope you'll make it. Tag me in it.
All right. <laughs> so here's my little sister. Diag. Um, but. <laughs>